manager of opposition business has to call. Um, thank you, Speaker. And as I was saying that um, from the outset that we are opposed to the Leader of the House motion, suspension of standing and sessional orders, um, the take note motion, and then we're debating it today. And the reason we're um, opposing this is because this is about the shutting down of the Victorian Parliament, and it's about the lack of opportunity for the opposition to be able to scrutinise the government. And as we said in my opening comments, that the uh, motion uh, outlines today, question time, government business, adjournment, so at adjourning at three o'clock, but it's not allowing us to do the grievance debate, it's not allowing us for member statement, and it's not allowing us to actually have an adjournment debate. However, in the conversation across, we've been assured that the member for Essendon is going to move an amendment to that motion to allow the, um, the adjournment items. And am I assuming the member's statement to be able to be tabled as part of Hansard? What I'd like to do now is to go back to the, the actual declaration. Let's, let's talk about the actual declaration that the Premier announced on Monday morning. So this is what the, the Premier said in his press conference. A state of emergency has been declared in Victoria to combat COVID-19 and help provide the Chief Health Officer with the powers he needs to enforce 14 days isolation requirements for all travellers entering Australia and cancel mass gatherings of more than 500 people as agreed by National Cabinet yesterday. So we, we have no issues with that. It's based on fact, it's based on, based on science, and it's agreed to by the National Cabinet. The second paragraph goes on. Premier Daniel Andrews and Minister for Health Jenny McCarkos announced that the state of emergency would begin on Monday, 16th of March at midday and be enforced for the next four weeks to assist with measures designed to flatten the curve of COVID-19 and give our health system the best chance of managing the virus. Under a state of emergency, authorised officers at the direction of the Chief Health Officer can act to eliminate or reduce a risk to public health by detaining people, restricting movement, preventing entry to premises, providing any other direction an AO considers reasonable to protect public health. I'm still quoting from the Premier's uh, press release. The first direction from the Chief Health Officer under the new powers will include banning non-essential mass gatherings of over 500 people, such as cultural events, sporting events, or conferences. A number of the state's largest cultural institutions, including the National Gallery of Victoria, the State Library of Museum uh, Victoria, has also announced temporary closures, and events such as the Melbourne Comedy Festival, Melbourne Food and Wine Festival have already been postponed. Gatherings, that are deemed essential and may continue to include public transport, food markets and workplaces, schools, TAFEs, universities will remain open for now, but have been asked to restrict mass gatherings, such as assemblies and lectures of over 500 people. At this stage, spaces or locations where 500 or more people may be in transit, such as Federation Square or Burke Street Mall, are excluded from the ban on mass gatherings. However, it is deemed necessary to protect public health, the powers that can be used to, in future to quarantine entire suburbs, business or professions rather than just individuals. The powers also allow the Chief Health Officer to do whatever is necessary to contain the spread of virus and reduce the risk of the health to Victorians. So if we go to the actual uh, document, so this is the document that was attached to the, to the press release. And it says, directions from the Chief Health Officer in accordance with the emergency powers arising from the declared state of emergency. Under definitions, for the purposes of directions in paragraphs one, two and three, premises has the same meaning as in section three of the Public Health and Wellbeing Act. Number five of this um, declaration. A mass gathering is a gathering of 500 people or more persons in a single undivided space at the same time, whether in indoors or outdoor space, but does, but does not include a gathering at Parliament, under H, at Parliament for the purpose of its normal operations. So this is the direction 
given by the Chief Health Officer. By the Chief Health Officer. So under 5H it says that, um, that it does not apply to mass gatherings but does not include a gathering at Parliament for the purpose of its normal operations. Now, its normal operations are Tuesday, 12 o'clock to 7 p.m., and we adjourn. On Wednesday, 9.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., and we adjourn. Yep. On Thursday, 9.30 a.m. until 5 p.m., and then we adjourn. So we are abiding by the actual direction by the Chief Health Officer in accordance with emergency powers arising from declared state of emergency. And there has been no update that the opposition has received than this document that we have in front of us. So the press release went out Monday morning, we accept. But it does give us the powers or the exemption that we can continue as normal under this declaration. So I put to the House that the uh, motion that's been put forward by the Leader of the House is contrary, is contrary to the direction that is given to us by the Chief Health Officer that we can continue as is. Now, if, for example, the Chief Health Officer put out another um, a direction from the Chief Health Officer in accordance with emergency powers arising from the de declared state of emergency. If there was another document or another update on what we were issued as an opposition and the people of Victoria on Monday morning, then the government would have every right to move a motion to be able to put that in place. But the government is acting contrary to the advice that we have received from the Chief Health Officer. So it's contrary to what the advice of the Chief Health Officer has said. If there is a further document, if there is a further document, I'm guessing that the um, member for Essendon is the next one up, if he has a further document, then he needs to be able to give it to all members of the parliament. Yeah, not just otherwise, parliament. otherwise, through the chair, otherwise, we are acting in direct, in, di in the clear direction of the Chief Health Officer that the Parliament can act as normal without any um, adjustments. The other concern I have is that there's always that sneaking su suspicion that the government may be trying to um, escape from scrutiny. <laughs> may ex escape from scrutiny. And I'm just wondering if there are some issues that the government is trying to hide from by the opposition not being able to raise issues through an aggrievance debate. And I looked last night at a couple of press releases that the Shadow Treasurer had put out um, in regards to the shambles that the state has got itself in in regards to the finances. Now, what they're trying to do, what they're trying to do is what they're trying to do is to say that we've got all these financial uh, shambolic problems, but oh, it's all the problems of the bushfires, the bushfires recovery, and the coronavirus. But as so clearly put out by the Shadow Treasurer, the figures are from the 1st of July 2019 to the 31st of December 2019. It doesn't include anything to do with the bushfires anything to do with the bushfire recovery or the coronavirus. So they've got themselves into a shambolic mess prior to the bushfires, the bushfire recovery and the coronavirus. God only help us what the budget is going to look like, but it is clear to me that they've used up every single one of their contingencies, every single one of their contingencies, and they have no money left. And it's for those reasons that we cannot support the motion put forward by the Leader of the House. The Member for Essendon, point of order. It's denied. Oh, okay. Member for oh, Essendon. For no, leave wasn't granted. The Member for Essendon. I thought... <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank Order, you. the Thank member for Essendon has the call. Thank you, Acting Speaker. And I rise to support the Leader of the House's motion. And as foreshadowed, uh, I'll be moving the following amendment. Uh, I move that after paragraph 2B, the following words be inserted. C. Members to submit. 1. Member statements for Thursday. 2. Adjournment matters for Wednesday and Thursday by providing them to the clerk in writing by the adjournment of the House on Wednesday and Thursday, respectively. 3. This House authorises and requires the member statements from Thursday and the adjournment matters from Wednesday and Thursday to be published in Hansard at the end of each day's Hansard. A, subject to Hansard editorial policy, and B, if any matters contains unbecoming expressions, the Speaker may direct that the matter be removed or amended before it is published. Uh, look, I'll speak briefly uh, to the uh, amendment I've just moved, uh, Acting Speaker. Point of order. Um, Acting Speaker, I, I just find it very odd that we are able to get this motion now why weren't we given this motion at the start of the um, of this debate? It just seems really strange that the Leader of the House didn't move this motion um, while she was speaking so we could all look at it. So when I was giving my contribution, we're actually looking at the motion and the amendment to the motion. And I'm just wondering why at the top you've got four, kiss, 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 kiss. I'm just wondering why that's why that motion <laughs> When we're talking about the coronavirus, we're talking about the coronavirus, I thought kissing was out of it. Maybe the member for resident has got an update on information. I've heard the member, the Leader of the House. On the point of order, Speaker, the reason I, if the, if the manager of opposition business had have been um, paying more careful attention to my contribution, he would have noted that I went into the detail and the substance of the motion. It was the advice of the clerks that uh, the motion needed to be moved by a member other than me. That is the reason why you are receiving it now. And I did provide the information and the substance to the House when I made my contribution. So that I trust that clarifies the matter for the manager of opposition business. I would also suggest that this, I appreciate there is a lot of um, interest in this debate. It's not something to be made light of. It is not something to be made light of with frivolous observations. I'd hope that we could get through the remainder of this debate in a cordial way, and I just repeat that it was the advice of the clerks as to why this motion is being tabled in this way. Uh, amendment. There's no point of order. The member for Essendon and Home. I've heard from people on the point of order. There's no point of order. The member for Essendon had the call. On a further point of order. On a further point of order, uh, Acting Speaker, the, the fact that we've just received this amendment to, to what is a very important motion, a motion that uh, the uh, Leader of Opposition Business has spoken to at length and, and, uh, and a very good motion, I'm, a very good contribution, I must say. But for the, for the opposition to be able to consider the um, ramifications of this particular amendment to the motion, surely the, the government doesn't believe that we can just on the fly um, assess this on, on behalf of our broader party and make a decision on the fly. We don't operate that way. I mean, the government might operate. The government might operate on the fly with many, many things. And I've seen, I've seen contributions from ministers during question time and other times, and indeed backbenchers. And there is no question that the government is used to operating on the fly. But uh, frankly, for the government just to hand this amendment down uh, to the motion at a moment's notice and expect us to consider it um, is, is just unconscionable. And it's clearly they knew they were going to be putting this forward. We could have at least been given something. It didn't have to be formally moved by the uh, by the leader of the house, certainly. But she could have at least passed it over to us so we can look at it over the morning. But no, certainly we haven't had that opportunity. The member can take his seat. The point of order was the same. There's no point of order. The member for Essendon. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Acting Speaker. So I think that both the uh, motion moved by the Leader of the House and the amendment that I've moved in my name gets that balance right by ensuring that uh, members have the capacity to raise issues of concern uh, to their uh, communities, uh, both tomorrow, uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, and that further to that, um, this is about about making sure that we all have a minimal level of exposure and that we ad adhere to the advice of the Chief Health Officer. That is what is driving the motion moved by the Leader of the House uh, and we are trying to get the balance right and on that note I commend both the Leader of the House's motion and my amendment. The Deputy